As you progress along your journey, you're going to realize something very, very interesting. When you're triggered and the old you or these old identities, these angry or these anxious or these stressed anxieties manifest instantly as a result of a thought or being triggered, you're going to realize that the energy that it takes to sustain those identities just seems like a huge burden. See, when you were unconscious of these behaviors, you were funneling so much energy into maintaining these false protective personalities, these false identities, these identities that wanted to lash out or defend some sort of ideology or some sort of a belief that was limiting you. It took so much energy unconsciously to sustain these identities, to keep them manifested. But now, as you expand your consciousness and you settle into your heart, you get more connected and more anchored in your body and more connected to the planet, more connected to your intuition, your guides, your higher self. You're realizing that the amount of energy that went into these old identities when you were in tr triggered or you had some of these rogue thoughts that would bring up anxiety was just an overwhelming amount of energy. It was like an energy vampire. And if you think about it, in order to keep fueling these old dense identities, you had to put so much energy into them, you became tired. You became defeated. You became exhausted. So as you, you navigate your journey, you're going to start to become aware of the fact that your energy has been flowing out into these identities instead of inward to connect with your body. That prevented your higher self from actually grounding and being integrated right here into your physical body. So you remained a player or an avatar of these false, protective, egoic identities. Now, I don't, I'm not here to tell you that you're not going to get triggered or that you shouldn't get triggered or if you do get triggered or you have a thought that creates stress in the moment that you're doing something wrong. That is part of the experience where these energies make us up, dense energy, lower frequency energy, higher frequency energy. It's all part of the mix. But when our energy gets funneled off to maintain these false identities, it can truly get very exhausting. And think about it. If you do that month after month and year after year and decade after decade, just imagine the toll that that can take on your health, on your well-being, on your state of mind, on your peace, on your joy, and on your happiness. So when you start to realize when you're triggered that you actually can feel that energy flowing into these old identities, you are really on a path for massive, massive change because you can make a choice consciously if you're aware of when this is happening to connect with your heart, to bring the attention back in and allow yourself to just simply feel the old that's come up but not allow yourself to feed it because that's what we're doing. So we're here, we're bringing in this light, we're eating, we're bringing in nutrients, right? All of this energy is moving through us and we are choosing to use that energy to feed old false identities so we get exhausted. That's what I call being soul fragmented when you have energy going into all of these false identities and they pop up in certain situations. Maybe you're an aspect of yourself when you're around your parents. Maybe you're a false aspect of yourself when you're around your children or when you're around certain friends or certain people. You feel like you have to shrink yourself and become the specific protective identity to defend your limiting beliefs, right? It takes a lot of energy to sustain that. You are not present. You are not allowing life to move through you. You are not allowing life to flow. You are reacting to the situations, the external situations around you based on beliefs or experiences that you had when you're younger. Now to sustain that, again, takes a lot of energy. It is truly exhausting to be the ego. And so many of you may feel like you're the ego 24-7. You're always reacting to external stimuli. That is very, very exhausting. Not only is it exhausting, it disconnects you 
from your guidance, from your support system, from your higher self. It's like those aspects of you, those higher frequency, multidimensional aspects of you don't even exist. You are so focused in funneling your energy into these false identities and false narratives that were created solely based on a 3D reality brought in by your five senses that you have completely forgotten the truth of who you are, which is an amazing, loving, multi-dimensional being. So if you start to work on getting into the flow state more often, observing when these old identities come up and are begging for your attention, they're begging for your energy, when you could start to spot that, you could simply guide that energy back into your heart space and breathe with it. When you do that, you will instantly feel a sense of calm come over you. Your nervous system will retreat from fight or flight. Your blood pressure may drop a little bit. Your breath, your breathing may slow down. And correspondingly, your heart rate's going to slow down. So your whole physical uh, uh, manifestation is going to change in that very moment. Now, if you were unconscious and you started funneling energy into this false identity, then your mind, your nervous system, your immune system, your body will respond to those thoughts that are being generated by that false narrative, by that false story, by the false set of limiting beliefs. And your physical body will actually change. You will become more stressed. You will feel more anxious. Your blood pressure may go up. Your heart rate's going to go up. There's going to be a disconnect between your brain, your nervous system, your immune system. You're going to feel tired. You may even get sick. That's because your energy then has become fragmented. It is no longer operating as part of the whole. Think of light coming through a prism. It's white light coming through and it fragments into the various colors. Okay, so what we want to do through the soul integration process is recognize all of these colors, these aspects of us that are trying to defend some sort of a false identity that was created to keep us safe while we were young. So as you observe these identities popping up, and this happens to me all the time, somebody will say something, or I'll have something, some sort of an experience, it could be an email, it could be a conversation, whatever it is, and I can feel an old aspect of me that needs to protect something or defend something rise up. And it has a very strong electromagnetic field and it's so comforting to me because it's so familiar. That's why it's so easy to lose yourself in these identities. It's like, it's like an old friend, step right back in. And we step right back in and our energy gets fragmented. Our energy slows down moving through our body and we get small, we get heavy, we get cut off from the truth of who we are. And this comes up for me often as it comes up for you. It's a normal part of this process. It's a normal part of this reality. But the key is to be able to recognize or be aware of when that's happening and hold that space. You want to maintain awareness of who you really are, this energetic, multidimensional, loving being, and allow these aspects of you to come up and be seen. You just don't want to step out of the truth of who you are and into the smallness of these protective egoic personalities. You want to allow them to be seen, bring the attention back in here with breath into the heart space, reconnect and alchemize that energy. As you learn how to do that, and this takes time, it's not something that can be done overnight. It's not something that can be done in a week, in a month, even in a year. It takes a commitment and it takes repetition. It takes getting centered, getting present, even while you're feeling good, not waiting for the trigger, but working on your breath, working on connecting with your, your chakras and balancing things, working on bringing consciousness into the areas of your body that are maybe tight or maybe feel offline if you've got aches and pains and things like that. So it takes that kind of work over a period of time to be able to build that new neural circuitry in that body so that when these old identities get triggered and they pop up, you don't dive back into the old blueprint of these identities. You've created new neural circuitry in the body 
which is one of calmness, one of peace, one of abundance, joy, one of love that you've worked on while consciously breathing, doing breathwork exercises like I talk about on this channel, meditating, and just creating space, right? When you have that new neural network set up, when these old identities pop up, you're going to easily be drawn back into the body. So you won't become these old identities. You're going to recognize them. You're going to feel them. You're going to allow them to be seen, but you're not going to lose yourself in them. Meaning, you're not going to allow your energy to get to flow right out into them, right? They're like little energy vampires. You're going to maintain control over how your state of being is in the present moment. And that's the thing that takes work. It takes repetition. It takes commitment to yourself. So if you are ready to dive in and do that work and be able to navigate life in a more stable, more aligned fashion, click the link below. You can book a 15-minute discovery call with me and I'll tell you about how I can assist you or help you finally get over those blockages that have been manifesting the same life, the same days, the same experience for you over and over and over. So if you're ready to finally get past that, let's get on a call and I'll explain to you, lay it all out and show you how I can guide you through that. There's a link in the description. If this video resonated with you, watch this one next. Thank you so much.